Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the very first edition of Mind Your P's and Q's. As always, I am your host, Lucas Heckenberger, a professional party person. And joining me today via Zoom is my favorite country music star out of the Lehigh Valley, the queen of country during the time of Corona, Kendall Conrad. Thank you so much for being here. What an intro. Thanks for having me. I think maybe I'm an amateur um, party person. I mean, for my, listen, your, your, your Instagram page, Kendall's Bites would say otherwise, you know? Okay, great. I Thank haven't you. seen, I haven't seen a good foodstagram in a while. So I'm happy to see one oh, popping up. Thanks in the so much. Well, and, you know what they say, uh, fake it till you make it, right? That's right. That's right. And I, honestly, that <laughs> intro, I think might help my cause a little bit here moving forward. Sweet. I'm all for that. <laughs> so Kendall, um, you know, as, as is customary and traditional for me, I think it's always important to open social gatherings with a nice little bit of social lubrication. So, okay. you know, um, as we got delivered to you uh, very recently, we have a little piece of Pennsylvania history in a glass today. So we are going to be making the Clover Club cocktail, which was originally invented in the early 1900s in Philadelphia at the Clover Club. So if you want to go ahead and grab some stuff, I'm just going what to if, talk while we make this drink. I'm kind of nervous. You should, that, and that's okay. I'm <laughs> here to talk you through everything, all right? Okay, so what am I grabbing first? So I would grab whatever you're going to be mixing the drink in, grab that. This shaker, right? Yeah, the shaker, perfect. The shaker. Look at this. It's even got this thing. Yep. That is a Boston shaker right there. I am Ooh. using the okay. more traditional two tin that you will see in cocktail bars around the okay. world at this point. So I got this at Target. Uh, listen, I, my favorite place <laughs> to go get bar gear is is surprisingly Williams and Sonoma. I I, I thought really? I was gonna, I thought I was gonna hate that place. That's I don't, super I don't, bougie. I don't retail. I don't retail at all. Okay. I'm not a shopper. I go shopping for food and I go shopping for booze and stuff to put in booze. That's it. And so okay. like you know, I'm getting married in June and we of course had to build Congratulations. a Congratulations. And thank you very much. Uh, it was supposed to be in May. So we're, we're, you know, we're doing the whole Rona thing, trying to make sure that everybody's safe and we can have everybody there. Mm. If we, we, we might end up going to do a justice of the peace thing, but I, I doubt it. Ideally, we'd like to have all 250 guests and throw a, a banger of a party. So um, I would expect nothing less from you. So, yeah. So like, obviously <laughs> this was all, this was all, this was all PQ pre-quarantine when we were putting together a wedding registry and like I walked into Williams and Sonoma and I was like, holy shit, they have so much cooking wear and <laughs> barware. They had like Harry Potter and Star Wars themed um, pancake makers. Ooh. And from what I understand, from what I hear, you're, you're a pancake person. Yeah, you just got my attention now. So like, I of course bought both of them and we did <laughs> Star Wars and Harry Potter themed pancakes at my house when it's not waffles. What was Harry guy. Potter? What was the Harry Potter like thing that it, it made? They, they had a sorting hat. I was going to say that's the easiest one. one. That's in the shape of a wand. I think okay. um, Aragog, the spider, I think was one of them. <laughs> I love that. Uh, that's I was, great. I was a huge Harry Potter nerd when I was young. Like, yeah. Still, I love the movies. But when I was a kid, I would literally wait in line at like midnight at Barnes and Noble for the books to come out. My mom was always gracious enough to uh, take me and, and get me hooked on the wonderful world of the transphobe author i'm just kidding jk rowling i don't know anything about you other than you wrote children's books that made a lasting impression on me as a child so and still do still are oh my niece is nine, nine years old i gave her both of the deathly hollows and she gave them back to me two weeks later and i was like holy crap kid quicker than i was they're good so, they're good it's good stuff all right so speaking of good stuff let's have a drink shall we Let's, let's do it. I'm excited about All this. All right, so Kendall, you have a combination of gin and blanc vermouth in one of the jars that I gave you. I want okay. you to go ahead and put about half of that into your mixing tin. Actually, for you, I don't know. Have you ever cracked an egg and done an egg white before? This is that, right? That is, or is it the, the, that is the liquor mixture. Yes. That we're using right now, currently. Yes. However, have okay. you cracked an egg and put it into a cocktail before? Not an egg white. Okay, so we're going to do that together first, because if you get the whole okay. egg yolk into the drink, the drink's ruined, and we got to start all over from scratch. We don't want that. We do not want that, because unfortunately, you only have a limited supply of, of, the, of the alcohol and lemon-raspberry mixture that I'll talk about in a minute. So <laughs> Okay, so tell me, what, tell me what I'm doing. 
there are two methods to cracking an egg to put into a cocktail. There is the chicken claw method, and then there is the more traditional separation method. So we're going to go more traditional. I'm a chicken claw guy. That's neither here nor there. So we're going to take it, and you're just going to crack it on the edge. Yeah. And then I want you to just pull that apart like that, keeping the yolk inside of the eggshell. And you okay. just push that back and forth once or twice through. Egg white will come out. Egg yolk will stay in. Because basically what we're doing, and this is going to basically be a quick meringue when we're done okay. shaking this cocktail together. But again, okay. we're can, I, wise, can I do it in a bowl? Do I have to do it in the like shaker? If that's more comfortable for you, that's fine. I'm just for like, the, my, let's my, do, I'm doing it in the bowl. Um, my just in case I need for this is just, you don't want to do, you don't want to do it over an already made drink if you're unfamiliar with it, because you might get the whole damn thing in there. And then we got to start <laughs> from scratch. So, <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so nervous now. Oh, okay. welcome to day one of bartender training, Kendall. You okay, to, don't worry. I'm doing it in the bowl. Do it in the bowl. That's fine. Hold okay. it up, though. I want to. I want to watch. No, you can't hold okay. it up. You got to use two hands, right? I got to use two hands. Well, All okay. Right. I'll go over here. I'll go over here. I don't know if you can see it. Do but, it. Okay. You can do it. I believe okay. in you. Okay, I'm kind of scared. Okay. I'm not bad at at egg cracking, though. Do you do you make okay. eggs at home? Are you a cook? Do you cook at okay. all? Okay, I suck at cooking. Okay, yeah. I kept the the yolk in. Yep. Yep. Just let that egg white roll down. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Pull that off yeah. in half and then just dump that, dump that egg yolk right into the other side of the eggshell. And the and the egg white will just like fall out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Don't be shy. There you go. That's good looking. That's 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 a great A jumbo egg right there. Yeah, yeah. Just shake that, <laughs> shake that bad boy down. It won't you know, go. Just, just give it a little wiggle. Give it a little wiggle. Why is pass it so, that, like, pass that yolk right back to the other eggshell. Pass that it yolk looks right like back a to slug. the other egg. Looks It'll like go. a giant. Giant it won't. Like a giant what? Slug. That's what it looks like. Yeah, I agree with you. Definitely doesn't look like anything else. This is an adult's preferred show. Just, just so everybody knows, we are going to drink. Is this why you wanted me to do this, Lucas? No, I, I, I. This, this is strictly all right. This is for the cocktail, all right. This is, this is the traditional way to make a proper clover club. For a cocktail, sure. Can I like grab it and take your finger and just pull that bad boy? Oh, down. there, just it's gone. It. Yeah, see, there you go. You're perfect. It went. You're so perfect. now what? Now go ahead, throw that egg white in the shaker. Get rid of the egg. The egg yolk, we don't need that anymore. Unless you want to make, uh, unless you want to make some kind of a Caesar dressing or something later, we don't need the egg yolk. Okay, I'm sticking it in this bowl over here. Okay. Perfect. Multiple bowls, it's a good thing. I Caesar that's I I came prepared. I was like, I'm probably gonna need this. That's right. Um, so now I pour this in the shaker thingy. Yeah, yeah. Pour pour right. two ounces of your of your yeah yeah. Pour the egg white in there. Uh huh. Okay. Awesome. I didn't mess it up. I'm I'm really happy. I'm impressed. You're doing great. Are you? Are you yes, really? A hundred percent. And I know that this kind of thing like can be a little weird, but hey, this is what we bartenders do. I like to let people have a little bit of an insightful look into what we do. You're teaching me. I, I am a teacher at heart. I always said I would make a good teacher. I just don't have the freaking patience to deal with it. Well, yeah, because like if I mess that up, we'd have to do it all over again. You'd have to be like, okay, do it again. That's all right. We can edit just, that out. Right. Go. All right. Okay. So, um, okay this stuff? Go ahead. Pour, pour about half of your half of your mixture in there. Should should be two ounces roughly. Okay. And for I don't those, even have to measure anything. I have this awesome. It's a skull. It's yes. a shot glass, and it has the measurement the ounces on the back. Oh, like where we used to yeah. drill holes in our heads. Just kidding. That's in the frontal lobe. That's the lobotomy. My bad. I had my. <laughs> I was I had like, my, what? I had my biology mixed up. Kendall, you go ahead and okay. get that in there. I'll be right back. All right, you can do this. Okay. Wait, where are you going? Don't leave me. Okay. Mm. How are we doing? All right. I think, is that half? I think that's half, right? That looks good. That looks good. Okay. We're going to get close. Okay. My, my, I'm going to, I'm going to make sure mine's right on the money. So I have all my, I have my, my jigger here is what these are called. And if okay. you look inside of this, there's little lines that tell you what your measurements are. So like oh, that's people fancy. at home that like to bartend, um, I highly recommend a jigger such as this. This is like a Japanese jigger. There are other kinds, but try and get the ones that have the little bit of measurements in there. So that sounds like a dirty word. It does sound like a dirty word, but I don't know. We haven't thought of a new one yet. And honestly, I have a feeling the bar business is going to be the last one to have to get like super woke with our terminology and stuff. So I feel like yeah. we've got some time to think about something new besides jigger. This smells really good. Oh, 
people can't smell this from this video, but this smells amazing already. So it's it's really funny when we actually shake this whole thing together um, with an egg white cocktail. It usually the foam that we create on top typically takes on kind of a smell of like a wet dog. Really? So that's, that's why we have the raspberries. We want to kind of dress that so that it's more inviting okay. people when they go to smell this. So, so right now it smells like evergreen. Mm -hmm. That's that will be the gin. And today we are using uh, Bombay Sapphire London Dry Gin. Definitely heavy on that on that juniper um, notes that you get from a traditional London Dry Gin. Typically, I would make this with Blue Coat, but I didn't have Blue Coat on hand um, because Blue Coat is the first distillery to open up in Pennsylvania since Prohibition. This was kind of one of the cocktails that they opened up with in terms of reimagining. Um, distilleries and PA and local stuff. So this is this was something that I learned from a former uh, beverage director from them probably seven or eight years ago. And I wanted to give a little shout out to Jenna Jill and Chris Chamberlain down at Blue Coat, formerly a Blue Coat. They both do their own thing now, but those guys were awesome when I worked with them in the past. And that's uh, really cool. So we've got gin. I go an ounce and a half of gin. We're going to use a half an ounce of Blanc Vermouth today. We're featuring Dolan Blanc because uh, it's got a little bit of sweetness to it as opposed to like a Noily Pratt or something like that in terms of one of our, our Blanc Vermouth or Dry Vermouth, if you will. And then I make a raspberry cordial at home, which is basically cooking down sugar, water, raspberries until they macerate. I threw in a little bit of lemon zest just to keep that nice and bright undertone. And then obviously fresh lemon juice. And we're doing equal parts of the raspberry and lemon juice to go in here. So if you want to go ahead and drop that into the shaker. All right. So half of this again. Half of that. Yep. Okay. All right. Look at that. Oh, great. Look at that. You, you're oh my you're God. A, you're I, natural. I almost look like I know what I'm doing. Okay. Now he has egg white cocktails that I didn't tell you about as well. I, I, I hope you didn't work out yet already today. Um, Cause we're going to get a little bit of an arms workout here. It okay. requires, it requires a nice heavy shake to get. Cause what we're doing is we're combining the acid from the citrus uh, with the proteins in the egg white. And when we couple them together with the cold, the shaking motion, it's essentially making a quick meringue. So we want to get a nice little layer of froth on the top of our drink. So are you okay. ready? Are you so ready? wait, do I, put, do I put ice in it yet? Yeah, put ice in your shaker. Put ice okay. in your shaker and then make sure you put the lid on too. Okay. So mine, obviously we're gonna, the shiniest tins made by Corico in Japan. All right, ice is in it. And then... You can shake it however you want. Just make sure you shake this vigorously and we're going to shake for about 20 seconds. All right. Do you, do you go like up and down or like, I go, Oh, you're fancy. I go straight forward in front of my face because the, re the reason that I do that is when I'm working, if I were to do it some other way and let's say somehow this tin popped off, it would hit somebody. If I could have people sitting at the bar right now, I would yeah. have to be cognizant of that, but I don't. Okay. So however you, you feel. Haven't you need going. a better technique. You're, you're, oh yeah, you're right there. You're, you're right on the borderline of a Japanese hard shake. Really? That's Over a, the shoulder? It's a real thing. <laughs> All right, we should probably be pretty good. The tin should feel nice this and cold. This is cold. This gets yep. cold. Now, now, sometimes when we make egg white I, use, I have only used this shaker once. Well, now, now it's getting used again, and it's uh, twice. A piece of pencil. Oh, mine's frothy. Here. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm gonna go ahead so now, and pour mine. Go ahead, pour it right in your glass. So wait, how do you how do you, you get got. the like? So I put this back on, yeah, and then I the strain the it. Okay. Just, just pull that little lid off the top. There you go. Okay. I'm gonna strain it into here. Let's see. It looks nice. You got. you got a little bit of froth in there. You got a little bit of froth. That's nice. Tiny bit, tiny bit. It was frothier in the can. Okay. So I don't know if you can see mine, but I've got a nice. Oh, yours is green. perfect. I got a little, I got a tiny bit, tiny hey, bit of froth. I, 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 I highly commend your effort and, and ability <laughs> to take on something new at the drop of a hat without any kind of prior experience or. I told you, and I didn't, I didn't practice. I didn't want to practice. I'm like, let's just do it on the spot. Like I'm so, cool right, with Kendall, that. We're going to, we're going to cheers. Okay. So first, first episode of Mind Your P's and Q's Clover Club Cocktail, Kendall Conrad. Giddy Heck Honor. yeah. Okay. Do I? I have a mustache. Oh, that's really good. So it's moderately tart. Uh, the raspberry definitely sinks through. That Blanc Vermouth is really key in this just to help like keep those 
citrus notes up and some of those botanicals because you don't I, I don't like overly sweet cocktails always look yeah up. I don't either so mm. you know people think raspberry what they're they're gonna get this like sweet drink no the raspberries are nice and tart that's why we add a little bit of that lemon zest when we're making the actual cordial for it and it, and it comes out pretty good so so wait we didn't use these yet oh you can go ahead and put the raspberries in there you can put them on top however you want okay I think I'm gonna put them in it this is, this is how the cocktail would look if you got it at a restaurant I was working at. <gasps> you have the raspberry sitting nice. And like, look at that. Now that this is uh, a little, look at that beautiful frothy head. We got a solid half inch of froth on there. Amazing. So I think I'm sticking is, mine in the drink. Get on in there. And this is just a proper fizz cocktail right here for you, so. I'm gonna like redo this later and get mine real fizzy. Mm -hmm. And that, hey, listen, if we end up making a second one on the show, I'm never gonna get upset about that. <laughs> oh, true. I, I have, I have a second chance at, at, at redemption here. That was, I was thinking ahead. I think, you know, one is nice, but just in case we need a second. So yeah, I figured well, we might, we might need a second. I don't, I, I don't know if I told you this before, but I'm usually like, I'll get one drink and I'll just like, I'll nurse this drink for the whole evening. One drink. You did not tell me that. Yeah. I, I usually do that. Is that now, is that usually when you're working? um or is that no, just, even when you're just, just out? in general yeah even when i'm out i'm just like i'll get one good drink and just kind of you and know why and why nurse it just out of curiosity um i don't know i don't know why i've just always i've always done that there you know the waitress will come around i'll be like do you want another i'm like nah so you've I'm, never I been like the hay bartender another shot of crown no crown. i i don't i don't <laughs> listen to a lot of country personally <laughs> That was a nice reference though, Lady Antebellum. That was very I'm, nice. Is that who it I'm is? In, awesome. I'm impressed now. Uh, listen, I try to stay relevant. I don't know how good I am going to be at it, but we'll see what happens. All right. <laughs> that was a very relevant uh, reference but that so, you threw out there. So like on that note though, too, you know, obviously we're, we're, we've celebrated- This is the, phenomenal. We've celebrated the one year birthday of coronavirus in the US. <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. not much has really fucking changed with the exception of like random shutdowns here, not there. Florida has always had Florida man, which is awesome. Um, mm -hmm. But like for you personally, as somebody who represents themselves, has been doing it kind of your way pretty much throughout the entirety of your career. What's this experience been like for you in terms of finding work, staying afloat? How are you moving along through the through the Corona times? Um, I think it's different for me because not that I'm not cautious about it, like about going out and stuff. Um, but I'm not, I don't think I'm in the age group or whatever that is like dying from it. So I keep thinking like, if I'm going to catch it, you know, I'll quarantine. Just to be, just to be clear, you are not, you are not over 65 years old, just to be clear. No. And I'm not, uh, I forget what the, the term they're using, like immunocompromised and mm -hmm. all that stuff. I don't have any of those things. I don't have diabetes, like all of those things that right. um, is hitting people hard. So I'm kind of like, I can still go out and do like, all I do is music and I do acoustic entertainment and it's just me. Um, and I set up myself, you know, I don't have anybody else with me. So it's really just me. And if I wear my mask and I stand in a corner and I'm six feet away from everyone, um, you know, it's not that big of a deal. So like for me, I've just tried to find places that can accommodate me or, you know, still want live music or comfortable with that because I'm comfortable going out in it. Now I've talked to other people who are like, I haven't gone out to eat since March. You know, I've gotten takeout. I, you know, I have not sat in a place and I'm like, really? So I know some people are still scared and um, I don't know if it's maybe you feel this way too. My job hinges upon going out to restaurants. So I don't really, I can't really be like, cool, I'm going to sit at home and um, ride it out because I have to make money. Um, so that's still, if, if I remember correctly, when back in March, April, when there were more serious shutdowns than what we've been seeing the last like six or seven months, I'd say, you know, even for like, I, I guess, would you classify as like a gig worker mm -hmm. essentially? So like, mm -hmm. I know that they, they completely shit the bed on having uh, 
additional compensation benefits available for workers of, of your ilk for like private contractors and whatnot. Like they mm-hmm. totally shit the bed in terms of supporting you. So you didn't really have much of a choice when it came to actually persevering and trying to continue to go out and earn your livelihood. Yeah. I mean, there was no route for me to take at that point. And then there, there was something that might've popped up that they added later for self-employed people. And then I'm like, well, how is that going to work later? Right. Like, and I was just, I was afraid to fill it out. I was afraid to do any of that. So I just kind of kept doing these virtual, you know, live shows. Like I did, I did, I think a couple, I did two at Notch, I think. Virtual um, shows? Yeah. So Where the hell was I? I worked there. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think, yeah, <laughs> there was somebody there. Somebody made me a cocktail. So I went and where we ate and drank last night in that corner booth, that's where I stood and I put my phone up. Um, and I think I had the, I think it was the, the lemongrass martini or something like that. The Thai lemon and, drop. Yes. I think ginger, that's what I had. A little bit of fresh ginger, some lemongrass. Oh yeah. yeah so we, good. We, we um, literally cook for our cocktails at work. <laughs> like, that's what we like to do. You know? No, it, it was delicious. Yeah. And so like, I, I was doing that and I was putting my Venmo and my PayPal and was just like anybody who is able or can right now and wants to throw a tip in my virtual tip bucket. And that's what I did from March through like July. I did that for like, when, when did you start going back to in-person stuff? It was, I want to, I want to say it was like early July. Was it like around the fourth? I forget when stuff started opening, but it might have been the end yeah. of June, early July. Yeah, I, I, I seem to recall it was the end of June, early July, because that's about the time that I started going back to work in person. Like I was laid off mm-hmm. three months from March through June. I well, well, we did. I did help out the restaurant a little bit with uh, like takeout stuff when that was like the only thing we were allowed to do. So, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, much like you, uh, going back to what you said before. Um, I mean, I have had a different experience with the Rona. I have had to be uh, pretty precautious in terms of my approach and it's not so much for my own health. Now, granted, I, I am I am not even a month done smoking, like quitting cigarettes at this point. So obviously mm-hmm. that was a big reason um, for stopping is just the fact that this is a respiratory thing that attacks your lungs. Um, right. Kill me that way. But some of my family members are definitely those people that would fall with like some mm-hmm. comorbidities that would be potentially fatal. Mm -hmm. Um, so it has been a different experience for me really like work has been my only real like I go out I mean I I do my shopping and everything but like I am so incredibly precise when I go to Wegmans anymore I am like all right (laughs) I know exactly what my maneuvering route is gonna be to go into the the grocery store for maximum efficiency really okay you have the whole floor plan I really do I I (laughs) I love grocery shop. Like I love grocery. I usually just like smoke a joint and I will go to the grocery store and I, I will see spend that. 40 minutes picking out all the things that I want to cook for the week because I love to cook. And that is, do you, you know, have like, when you go with a list of things that you need, do you, I find that I get preoccupied when I see new products or other things that I haven't seen before. And so I deviate then from like, do you do that? No, or I don't. you go in and you have a game plan. You're like this, 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 and I'm, I'm done. I'm not an I'm not an adventurous shopper. You know, like going <laughs> back, like it. I'm 33 years old, and I think I was like 32 when I walked into a Williams Sonoma for the first time, and I was like, "Holy shit, this place is great!" You know. So like, I, if I see a new brand, I'm like, I don't know what that is, so I'm just gonna ignore it. Oh no, you have you have to be like, what would it? And I'll whip out my phone and I'll Google like reviews right there and be like, what are people saying about it? What's in it? I'll look at the ingredients. You know what I mean? You have to, you have to next venture time out. A, next time I have a question about a new product, I'm just going to call you real quick. And I'm be like, yo, Kendall, what yeah. the hell is this? I need a consumer report ASAP, please. <laughs> I'll give you the lowdown. All right. I yeah, I love that. doing that. Like I might but get I, a little adventurous with granola bars, but I'm like, hmm, <laughs> blueberry or mixed berry, blueberry or mixed berry. I know I like blueberry. I'll probably <laughs> like the mixed berry. Oh, I'll get the mixed berry no. this time. Oh man, that's the most difficult grocery decision that you make. That's how exciting it all is for me. Now, when Mm -hmm. I go go to like, I I go to the the Allentown Farmer's Market as much as humanly possible. Okay, I I don't think I've ever been. I have relationships with most of the people that I buy from. I know at least like one or two of the people that work there. I usually know a little bit of a backstory about their family. So like for me, I enjoy going there and spending my money more that more so than I would go to a Wegmans. Now there mm-hmm. we, we we talk shit and we talk shop and I see what's going on. 
Um, like Red Barn Produce is where I go. The woman Becky that's there all the time. She's always super gracious and helpful. Um, and she's like, oh, yeah, we picked this yesterday or we actually bought this from so and so and sourced it for here. So, like, I have an understanding of where everything comes from. And I love that. I will spend so much time doing that kind of interaction, except if you go to the Allentown Farmers Market, it kind of looks like a COVID hotspot because everybody's got their mask like down here or not wearing it. And it's just like the slowest moving place in the Lehigh Valley, <laughs> but it's magical in its own right. So I love it. It sounds great. Shout out Little Miss Korea over at the Allentown Farmer's Market. Lo and her family, they do a wonderful job making Korean food down there. I I've had her food. food. I've had her food at the downtown Allentown Market mm -hmm. um, next to Queen City Barbecue. And that, she has like a KFC chicken sandwich. And it's like, oh my God, it's amazing. And the past couple of times I've been there, I've gotten, she has a plum green tea. Ooh. And it's iced. I love that. Yeah, it's very good. It's refreshing. So I remember um, first time, it was like right around when they opened and I went down there and I ordered like bao buns and something else for lunch. Mm -hmm. and asked me if I wanted um, one of the shochu juice boxes. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, shochu, I didn't think this was alcoholic. And like, I'm a professional. I should know better. She gave that me- That is alcoholic, she, right? She, oh yeah, she gave me a boozy fucking juice box <laughs> and I was hammered half the day then. And I was like, that was great. I'm a, I'm a customer for life. It's super sweet though, isn't it? Nah, it tasted like booze. This one really just tasted like pretty, like pretty hard alcohol. And I didn't know. Cause I've had soju like right out of a bottle mm -hmm. and it's very sweet. Mm -hmm. I know. So it's like, I liked it, but I don't know. It wasn't sweet at all. It was a little sweet, but it was like mostly booze. And I was like, Oh, hmm. okay. I, I <laughs> and she was like, I'm so sorry. Do you want me to take this back? And I was like, no, not at all. <laughs> at this point, no way. Um, how about, how about, Love that. Uh, how about the middle, uh, the, the middle Eastern place right next to it? Zahra, have you ever been there? Oh, Yes, I've gotten the, um, I forget what kind of burger it is. It's maybe, I think it might be the only burger on the menu, but it's uh -huh. like a very thick and it has like um, that tzatziki sauce uh -huh. on it. And uh -huh. it's like the, uh -huh. the oh, yeah. ground meat. It's like- They do a oh garlic tzatziki. They do like a garlic tzatziki and it's one of my favorite things in the world. I'm pretty sure they put that on the burger and it was amazing. Uh, I, eat the, I eat the steak shawarma every time I go there. Steak shawarma wrap is my Ooh. favorite thing that I've, I, like it's, it's one of my absolute favorite treats. Like, mm. like, like, I gotta you do that would, like you would get a baguette with like meat and cheese and lettuce and Paris. That's what I want in the steak shawarma. It's not going to be in like the United States of America. I just want everybody to eat it. Just walk around and eat it and fill the air with that garlicky. Now, process. the definition of that is, is meat in like a wrap, right? Mm. Okay. Shawarma? I don't know. Mm. Maybe I can get Robert Downey Jr. on and he can explain shawarma to me. Because <laughs> from what I understand, he made, he made shawarma very, very, uh, very popular in pop culture via the event. Did he really? He, he says something about shawarma at the end of the very first Avengers movie. Next thing I know, I, I, can, I can find 16 shawarma places in the Lehigh Valley three years later. It's incredible. Interesting. It's incredible. Who knew? Not, not me. That's Robert, sure. Robert Downey knew. I, I mean, I guess I'm going to, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think that that was written into the script either. I think that that was one of those ad lib moments that we were all. That's, so I love that stuff. Times. Yes. Yeah. Because yes. it happens once and you either get it or you don't. And if you get it, you're like, wow, that was really organic. Let's use that. How did that disappear already? Oh my gosh. I like how frothy yours is. Should mm -hmm. I just. No, no, no. You're good. That's slow. That's slow. Uh, listen, this is, I uh, don't, don't, don't feel like you got to try and keep pace with me. Okay. Oh, I got to keep pace with you. This is what I do for a living. All right. I drink, <laughs> and I read books and I make drinks and then I espouse the information. You know, it is funny though, because I think when people come up to me and, and talk about music and things that they're fans of and like, you know, Oh, who's your favorite, you know, country artist right now. And like, we talk about Kane Brown or Keith Urban or whoever. And I think I'm, I'm a fan of like food and like drinks and cool things the way you know what I mean that's the why way you that got, they that's are you got your Kendall's Bites page yes like I gush about like restaurants the way they gush about like Miranda Lambert it's really funny I don't I'm like oh my god I don't even know who Have that you... is yes you do she was married to Blake Shelton come on oh you're joking okay I was like oh you know who Gwen Stefani is right I uh I would holler back every time <laughs> I would holler back. Oh, is time. that is that your go-to? My uh, I like for Gwen Stefani. I know just what you're saying. That's my go-to when I'm at work because when people come up and try That's to talk to me when I'm busy, I'm like, don't speak. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> Leave me alone and come back in three hours when I'm not busy. 
<laughs> okay. Okay. I like that. Um, I, I mean, listen, I, I, Gwen Stefani is an icon. I love her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, she's still very, like, I love her style still. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like she she's she's wears rad. some crazy, yeah, crazy stuff. I'm like, how do you pull that off? But she does. Oh, she just, because she's Gwen Stefani. She just does. Amazing. Um, I love it. So how did you even get into like figuring out that music was your passion and that this is what you were going to pursue in terms of your career? So I don't have a, a enlightened moment of like, I don't amazing. think people are on here looking for enlightenment, Kendall. Don't worry. <laughs> no, I'm saying, I'm saying for me, like, I didn't have like, a, oh my God, this is it. After that, I have to pursue music. It was never anything like that. It was um, like, maybe this is, you know, it's like this for other people who have found what they're good at, but I just tried it one time and I was good at it. And then I was like, yeah. I love that. Don't you love that? Yeah. And I was like, wait, like, I was like, I like music. I always like music. And then like, I tried singing and like, I auditioned for like some school solos and I got them. And I was like, wait, I'm good at this. So you, like, were, you in, were you in a high school musical? Like like your high school's musical? So I was in a middle school musical. What musical? <laughs> it was Fiddler on the Roof. Oh, shit. I, I don't think I've musical. ever talked about this. Lucas. I love that musical. Never... It's amazing. It's good. They got it. Oh, man. Gwen Stefani used um, the Rich Man song. Whoa, full circle. Uh-huh. <laughs> if I was a rich man. Um, and I played Hoddle. I don't I got I, like I, it's been a long time since I've seen it. I'm it's one of the deep. three, I think it's the middle sister in the family. And so like I got a part where she had a solo and she had speaking lines and it was like, wow. And I think I was in like sixth grade and I beat out all the eighth graders for oh, it. Oh yeah. And, it was, and that feels yeah. good at that age. That feels yeah. so good at that age. I know. Oh what you're my talking god, about. yeah. Yes. And I was like, I must be decent at this. It's like I've got to be good at this. And then from there, I was like. I think I can make money at this. At, like I think that's great. You were like, I'm pretty sure I can make money on this. So let's. I, yeah, I was thinking that. I'm like, I think this could be a career. Like I think I like this, and that I could charge. That's excellent. <laughs> and then so from there, did you have any like really like awkward childhood photos of like you with like a flute of phone or like maybe you played the tuba and this is one of those things that people don't know about you? Like... Um. Oh God, I love where this conversation is going. Um, so like, you know, the, the recorders, did you have to play recorder music? We called them a flutophone at Catholic school. So that's what I thought. That's what I thought you were doing. Okay. Okay. Um, I probably took that way too seriously. Maybe that was a sign. Yeah. I like rehearsed and practiced and yeah, I, I wanted to play it and yeah. Good for you. I mean, you showed aptitude and dedication. So you're going to sit here and tell me you pick up a guitar the first time you play it. You're good. Come on. You started with the recorder, the flutophone, like it's a beautiful thing. This is the thing Actually, that kids, kids' parents need to know that there's still relevance to the flute of phone. <laughs> All right, my kid's going to be a country star now. Yeah. Oh you know, that's funny, though, because maybe there's some truth to it of just having, like, you know, you're drawn to, to music in general. It doesn't matter if it's a plastic, you know, little flute thing or whatever. You know? I was yeah. like, God, I can play, you know, Jingle Bell Rock on this. Like, this nice. is great. Yeah. Um but no, my first real, real instrument that I played was I played alto saxophone. Dope. Yeah, before guitar. How old were you and when I, you started saxophone? Um, I think I was in the fourth grade. Do you still play it all? <laughs> I play it. Um, no, but I think that like I still have it because I bought it like after I was done my high school career. I played it through high school. Nice. And after, yeah, and like. After that, I was like, I might actually use this. So I like bought it from the school and I still have it. And I think if you, like, if I pulled it out, I could still remember like some notes and some things and how to play it. So it's strange. Oh man, it's kind of like about the saxophone beforehand. Cause I know you have your guitar handy, but like the sax would have yeah. been, <laughs> that would have been, been amazing. blast from the past. <laughs> it's such a great instrument. I it agree. really is. I agree. Yeah. Now, are you, a, are you a Parks and Rec fan by chance? <sighs> I'm not. No. Is I, that any? I, Amy Poehler, right? Yeah, Amy Poehler. And, I love um, her, but I've never gotten uh, into it. Uh, Nick Offerman that plays Ron Swanson. He has <laughs> a, he has an uh, a, an alternate ego in the show called Duke Silver, where he okay. 
jazz saxophone at a club on the weekends under the pseudonym and he is just the lady killer of all lady killers in the show when he is duke silver yeah just, with the sax yeah it's amazing it's, it's a amazing. good instrument it's a good and instrument the, uh, i don't know why i picked that but the the, the drink feature were, were that i put together for valentine's day at notch is going to be called the careless whisper and i was like how can i figure Ooh. out how to put like some kind of a a saxophone stencil on top of this drink so that people know <laughs> to drink from the actual reed and not mm. you know i don't know but whatever Sometimes I love I, that. Sometimes I have too much time on my hands, but no practical application on how to get something done. So that's a great idea. Yeah, it's just not real, really like real. It's not really doable. No, but like the idea is there. Like it's I, I, there. I just like to drink you gotta it, work it. Fun and be creative. Like, you know. Yeah. I think to... sometimes with songs, it's like that too. Uh -huh. It's like, oh, that's a great lyric. And then you kind of work it and you're like, I don't know if it actually should be like, so I don't know how musical you are, but like the hook is like the little line that is usually the title. Yeah, 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 the hook. Um, and sometimes I have a, a lyric that I'm like, this is definitely a hook. And then you wind up writing the song and it's just like in the verse in the beginning. Uh -huh. And the hook is something completely different and it kind of like works its way somewhere else. Just, and it just didn't, it didn't work as the like, ba -dum -bum, I understand you know? what you mean. But you start with it and it kind of, it gets you to something that's maybe better or whatever. So, I mean, you throw some ideas out and they yeah. work. And, you gotta you know. just throw all the ideas out and then just mm -hmm. like put pieces together, right? Mm -hmm. Is that, so, so do you write all of your own music then as well? Yeah, so everything that's on um, Apple, Spotify, YouTube, like all the recorded stuff, I co-wrote or wrote all of it. That's um, awesome. Yeah, just because I like, you know, I like, I have things to say. <laughs> and yeah, yes. And so I'm like, I'm gonna, I don't need to right now say someone else's words, if that makes any sense. And I'm it like, does. I have ideas and feelings and things. And, and um, I was an English major in college. And, nice. and I'm, a, I can write, I can do this. So um yeah, I, I, I write all my own stuff. Which Are you is, like emotionally in touch with things too? Because I'm not. Yeah. I, I don't understand how to fathom these. Like I'm marrying a social worker and she's taught me a lot. Aww. And I'm barely on like identification phase, let alone how to positively impact negative behaviors. But like for you, have you like had the deep See, dive? See, it's because we talked about this. It's because you're an Aquarius. Uh, I, think, uh, <laughs> I think untreated brain trauma and... Uh, some minor substance abuse when I was in my early 20s might have something to do with it as well. And you're an Aquarius. Okay. All right. I'll go with the Zodiac. I'll you go can with the Zodiac. blame it on that. Head trauma, oh. head trauma be damned. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure I probably had like eight or nine concussions in my life and I can only really remember two. So, but see, that, that doesn't affect your heart. I think it's the heart's in a good place, but in terms of understanding the feelings oh, and emotions okay. that go I see through. What you I hear what you're saying. I'm kind of not, uh, not okay. the average level for people, I think. I think See, I love. Men, I think it's most men, though, right? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. There's some really, um, like, sweet guys that know this shit, but I don't know a lot of them. Yeah, you're not you're not in touch with your, <laughs> your emotional side. I try. Um, I have yeah. dogs. Like, they, they help. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's just, it's very... Um, not, I don't want to use the word freeing, but it's, it's very like, um, therapeutic uh -huh. kinda, to write 100%. songs. Yeah. So it's like, you kind of work through, you know, especially if it's something real, like it's a real situation. It's a real experience. I want to write about, you know, whatever it is, the moment that my boyfriend dumped me, like stuff like that. That's and you're kind of like, you're wondering why, or what did I do? And you write a song about it. And you kind of understand a little bit more after you've written the song I mean, and you kind of yeah. look at it and you're like, okay, I feel a little bit better now. Um, so that's kind of what I get out of it. And it's a safe, um, it's a safe way to do that. It's like talking to yourself almost. Mm -hmm. um, and you get a product, like you're productive. It's great. Absolutely. <laughs> I you're love it. Like, all right, let me hit. Let me hit the this the productivity box. I'm gonna hit the therapeutic box, the creative you, box. It's awesome. You do so much. That's awesome. I see. Like <laughs> I don't, I don't know that I have creative outlets like that. Like I mean, mm -hmm. if we like sitting down and your drinks are creative. Exactly. 
but that's not like the same. That's not getting in touch with emotions. That's not working your way through things. That's yeah. I'm a little upset. So I'm going to go to the well here and I'm going to (laughs) make something I haven't made before. And I'm going to numb these feelings instead of address them. (laughs) But I mean, if it makes you feel better, does it matter? Uh, a little bit. I think so. I think you got to I think you got to uh, have a healthy balance of physical health and mental health to go with these things. And let's be honest, I'm I'm just a really good drug dealer at the end okay. of the day. Uh, okay. Because alcohol are drugs, you know, coffee's mm-hmm. a drug, nicotine's a drug, mm-hmm. cannabis, not a drug. I'm going to argue that till the day I die. Not a drug. But Interesting. No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just a drug dealer. Why? Huh? How is cannabis Why? not a drug? It's a plant. Yes. Just because it has psychoactive characteristics to it doesn't mean it's a drug. But isn't tobacco a plant? Yeah, tobacco's a drug. Yeah, but well, if the tobacco and the cannabis drug. are both Toba- plants. Tobacco's not the drug. The nicotine that goes in with the tobacco, that's part of the okay. process of making cigarettes. Because tobacco in and of itself is not, um, it is not an addictive substance. It is the nicotine and some of the other additives that go into the cigarettes that inevitably turn them into these addictive substances. But the tobacco isn't good for you. Just, uh, but that doesn't make it a drug. It's still a plant, you know, but the mm-hmm. way that we refine it, the way that we manufacture and package and all that definitely uh, adds up to the negative effects that come with a cigarette. But goddamn, they're so romantic, though. I, I got to admit to you, I miss them. There's such a romance. What, the cigarettes? There's, uh, for smokers, there's such a romance with cigarettes, almost like some people lean towards music or the bottle or yeah. whatever. And what because you like the way you look holding it or like what? no it's 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 not even about the way that i look it's about the way that it makes me feel it's terrible okay it's a okay. horrible thing and i'm really and it's romantic them. it is for some reason or another i don't understand okay. why but uh, i could maybe see that i have never smoked ever i, I do not recommend it not one little bit <laughs> i don't recommend doing it at all ever in your, it's not a good idea well, it's just because I've always, again, since I was a kid, wanted to do music, wanted to sing and like your lungs, you're like, that's been super important to me. So I usually avoid because it's the thing that is my livelihood. So I kind of like, I don't want to mess with anything with that. Um, that's kind of been at the forefront for me. So how about, how about either of your parents? So either one of them smoke or anything? No, no, Mm-mm. no, nope. neither did mine, neither did mine, but somehow I turned out to be a smoker. I mean, I know why. I know why at this point. Because if you work in a restaurant, the only break you get is if you're going to go have a cigarette. Otherwise, they're like, oh, you're standing around. We got something for you to do. Hmm. So That's interesting. Do you really think that? Oh, I know for a fact. I've, I've actually uh, huh. examined my emotions and looked inwardly on this topic. And I think have I have you? A, a good idea. <laughs> Thank you so much. Wow. It's very intuitive. <laughs> I, I mean, some, with some things, all right? Like, realistically, when you work in... <laughs> The restaurant and like I've always had the fortune of working in places that you would probably like, like that more upscale, finer cuisine, mm-hmm. higher end dining kind of an aspect. Um, I feel exposed. Wh- why? Because you have good taste in food and drink. Oh, shit. <laughs> How dare you, Kendall? <laughs> um, no, but like I've always gotten to work in places like that. Mm-hmm. And with that comes certain expectations when it comes to dealing with clientele. And like, I used to work off of the University of Penn's campus for like two and a half years. I met a lot of really, really, really smart people that taught me some things that I think have helped my brain grow a little bit. And you mm-hmm. just get this, um, you get this perspective of seeing all different walks of life and understanding different people, their personalities, especially when you watch them go from stone cold sober to pretty inebriated by the end of the night, you get to see mm-hmm. the true characteristics of people as opposed to what they want you to see in terms of being in a public place. I agree with that 100%. 100% because I found that um, I was just talking about this with, I think it was my mom. We were talking about this. Some people like are great sober and then they're drunk and they're awful. Mm. And then some people are very inhibited and quiet and snotty and then they drink and then they're like, they're fun and they're likable. You know, it's very yeah. interesting. It makes me think about like the, the things that, all right, so let's take the first person, for example, that's like an asshole. And then when they drink, they're normal. Right. Mm-hmm. Is that what you said as the first example? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and you're like, wow, I actually, you're, you're actually, I like you now. 
It's like, what are the, what, 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 what you're is likable. going on in your life that's preventing you from being a nice person? And then with the other mm. one where they're like quiet and reserved, it's like, what has happened to you that you don't feel comfortable sharing things with anybody? And it sucks mm-hmm. because I feel like when you get to that point where your, 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 your kind of identity changes so much from mm-hmm. sober to drunk, it's like, what things have affected you so much to the point that you don't feel comfortable being yourself? Because I think mm-hmm. the, drunker, the drunker the person, the more true they are to how they actually feel. I think it's pretty I agree. well accepted in most social circles. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, what, what happened that's holding you back from being that person? And it sucks. It's sad. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, hey, listen. Yeah. I got another beautiful frothy bastard right here. Wait, you made another one without me? You couldn't tell. You couldn't tell that without I was making me? a drink. I thought you were. I thought you, you couldn't were. tell. And then I'm like, I, I mean, I just figured. And then I was like, he's not. He's not going to do it without me. I don't want to believe it. Sure did. <laughs> Why should I make another one? If you want to. Hmm. Okay, you know, let's see if I can. Do what? Do you play a song and make the cocktail at the no, same I mean, time? No, I'll play a song while you do it. I do not own the rights to this music. I'm, it, I'm not going to play a song. Oh, I, I thought you were going to like whip out an instrument or oh, something. God, no, I, I, am, I am musically uninclined. I will, you know, I will say I did. Really? Make, uh, I am not, I am not. I can't really do stuff when it comes to instruments or singing, even though, oddly enough, I had a lead in my high school musical my senior year. We did, uh, we did, Annie, what was it? we did Annie Get Your Gun. Okay. And I played Charlie, who was like the manager of the, of the traveling, whatever the hell it was, shooting yeah. rodeo kind of circus type thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, I got to tell you, I don't get nervous for stuff usually. Um, I, that was the most nervous I think I've ever, like, I've spoken in front of hundreds of people and in some instances, thousands, that didn't, that didn't bother me. Doing the high school musical bothered me because I was so uncertain about singing. Um, I just thought I was terrible at it. I ended up just like talk singing my way through it, you know? (laughs) Um, And like, I might've forgotten a line or two, but like, otherwise, I mean, it was a blast once I got into it. I love Mm -hmm. it. I love yeah, it. they're fun. They're really fun. Um, I'm curious. Do you like as far as theater goes? Do you like plays or musicals more? I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm a real sucker for musicals. Are you? I'm sick. Can I? My my guilty pleasure. My my guiltiest pleasures. The things like when I am feeling a little goofy late at night and like say my fiance's asleep or something, I go right to Pitch Perfect. Really. Love it. I love it. Love it. Musicals, all of the Disney musicals, the Pixar musicals, and like everybody raves about Coco, but all these, all these bitches are sleeping on the book of life that came out like a year before Coco, all yeah. around the Dia de los Muertes. Phenomenal. Okay. Absolutely. I think I've seen that. Is that where he goes into the land of the, the dead and, and with his grandfather? And is that that? Yeah, and then they like bring some back on the Day of the Dead, and there are yes. these two gods that have bets on what's going to happen with Manu. I think his name's Manu. Manulo is the name of like the protagonist in the movie. Yeah, and he, um, and like the the guy he loves is like a, a he plays guitar and he's like this rock star, right? Well, it's like a guy and a girl. They definitely kept it um, heterosexual in that regard. I haven't seen any gay latin musicals from uh disney or pixar yet so i i think, we, no, I think we're on he goes and it's like his he, his dad is in like the land of the dead uh-huh. and he's like a, a latin music star or and something they're like right fighting off they're like they're like fighting off some bad guy at the end it's crazy <laughs> okay let's see if i can get this frothy this time yeah, yeah. really shake it get those get that action going like a shake weight total action total action See, I can't hear the ice going too much. That's how I know you're not shaking it hard enough. It's going. It's going. I can hear it. You can. Well, I'm not sitting in the room with you, unfortunately. So, you know, one day we'll be able to do this in a bar somewhere. Oh, that'd be fun. I, that, that's I, I want to just record in bars at this point and just have a good time doing this stuff. So that's when we would definitely have to throw in the live music cover. Okay. I'm down for that. All right. Let's, let's see, see how round two is. Let's see if we got froth on round two. I think I see some Ooh, already. I think I see yo. some already. Froth. Froth. There's definite froth. Look at this. Oh, froth. yeah. Night and day. Night and day. That froth. Is a, 
Look that at is that. Proper I did it. as hell. That is proper as hell, Look Kendall. At that. I'm proud of you. Look at how freaking frothy that is. Yo. You're hired. Lucas. Look at that. Listen, next time Corona shuts you down, you just call me. I'll get you a job at the bar. <laughs> that is like a beer. That is frothy. Well Yo. Done, my dear. Clink. Yo, cheers. Amazing. I did it. You're a good teacher. Thank you. I try. I'm clearly not good at keeping my face in order, but hey, what are we going to do? Maybe maybe next time it won't be a, an egg white cocktail, so I don't <laughs> just cover my face. So it's frothy is the egg making the egg, it frothy. The, the, the protein from the egg white coupled with the cold, oh, the coupled with, with the... shaking, and then the citrus, okay. the acid in the citrus basically builds that meringue. So now you could make like lemon meringue in a, in your in your Boston shaker if you just need to quick do it quick make one good to go but i don't think the raspberry thing is going to be as good as yours like how would i do that no no i'm saying like, say, you, say you got like a little lemon meringue pie but you don't have any meringue for it you just take egg white some citrus, and the gin a little bit of sugar throw it in there shake it all up together you got yourself meringue. really it'll yeah. still work it's pretty much the same thing we just okay. have booze in this i'm like so proud of myself I mean, I don't know. Uh, do, do you watch the Great British Baking Show at all? I don't. Hardcore, I've looked at it, though. One of my absolute favorite finds, not finds, but like one mm -hmm. of my favorite things that I've dove into over quarantine is like Great British Baking Show. Oh, man. So really? It's the most positive, pleasant show I've ever seen. And it's such a change up from like American cooking shows where everybody's like, it's literally called Cutthroat Kitchen. And it's like, everybody's out to beat each other where these guys are just like, they're just so happy for everybody. <laughs> and they all just have these like beautiful cakes and breads and every, it's awesome. yeah, love it. The carbs, bread. That's my, like, I love that. Oh, I love bread. Like they bring the bread basket out and like, yo, that's who, my who, thing. Who, in your opinion, makes the best bread out of like chains, wherever you, wh who do you hmm. think the best bread? I think, I mean, this is a weird choice, but we had a uh, dinner at Mastro's in LA. Uh -huh. They brought out the, the bread basket and it was like five different types of bread. Ooh. And they, they had a pretzel bread. It was melted in your mouth. It could have been an entree Ooh. and it was complimentary and it was so good. Mastro's Amazing. Is that Italian? I've, I've never been to LA. I've been to San Francisco and San Diego, but I've never been to LA. You haven't? You gotta no. go. I hear it's kind of a dump. They they have some good food there. I've I mean, um, listen, LA definitely is a food mm, destination. Like the there's a restaurant out there called Felix that I would love to go eat at. Interesting. Handmade I haven't heard pasta, of that one. Handmade pasta and steak. It's maybe two years old. Sounds really? Good. Yes. I'll have to put it on I'll put it on my list. Yeah. Um, but no, this is a steakhouse and it's like real fancy inside, and then you get yeah. there and um I don't know if it's because a lot of celebrities go there or what, but it was very dim. So it was like hard to see like who was there. We weren't even sure. Um, very like seductive. And yeah, yeah, yeah it was yeah. a great, you yeah. Have a sexy great ambience. If you're in LA, you want to run a high end steakhouse. You got to have a sexy mm -hmm. ambience. Mastro's it, it checked that box. And I mean, listen, I'm not going to say where I was working at the time, but I worked at a place that was dimly lit. It had a very sexy vibe to it. And mm -hmm. the amount of escorts and, um, the amount of escorts that I would see come through there with gentlemen callers was pretty, pretty extraordinary. So I think that around here, part of it. I, again, I'm not saying where I worked and what, in what part of the country it was. I'm just going to say that I, what? I have worked in places like that and the, the, the dim lights serve many different purposes. Was it in Pennsylvania? Yes. I have never worked outside of Pennsylvania. I've never been okay. outside right. of Pennsylvania, but I have not lived exclusively in the Valley, but um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've done a couple like guest spots in New York um, out West uh, when I was out there a few years ago. So like I've, I've like bartended at night in some other places, but I have never lived outside mm -hmm. of the tri-state area. Okay. Okay. So what's one place in the Valley that you haven't been that's on your list? You know, do you have one? No, because I don't. Been, You've been, been to all of them. I've been to most of the upper echelon restaurants in the Lehigh Valley. Mm. Um, okay. I'll be perfectly honest with you. Brutal honesty. 
I, okay. I think the Valley should be doing so much better with our food and our booze as a whole. Like there mm-hmm. are some very wonderful places in the Lehigh Valley. Um, like, I mean, obviously Bolite is probably king of the castle. Still haven't been there. Um, savory, the top of my list. savory has very, the savory grill has very, very good food. Also haven't been there. Let's You're see, naming like, all these places you're going. Three Oaks, which used to be called Oak, is absolutely beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, I wasn't overwhelmed with the quality there. Uh, did you get a steak? Of course I did. What did I'm you get? about other things. I got a 39-ounce bone and 38-day dry-aged tomahawk ribeye. Okay. I think I got the petite filet. I'm not and it was filet. very... I can't do filet. You were saying that, yeah. I don't, I don't like filet for one reason and one reason only. Your flavor it's so comes tender. From fat. Flavor comes from fat, though. And I want fat on my steak. Yeah, but it's it's healthier for you. I, I'm clearly not worried about that. I <laughs> just stopped smoking like two weeks ago. I'm clearly not fair. worried That's about fair. That. Like when That's I fair. cook like a steak dinner and I'm making like whipped potatoes and whatever else, whatever else at my house for two of us, that's two sticks of butter and for dinner. Two sticks. Oh no. Oh yeah. All these, all these different kind of plant oils and seed oils and all that shit can kiss my ass. Give me good old oh, man. Salt butter, some fresh garlic and some herbs and I'll take care of everything else. Herbs are great. Garlic is great. Red onion is not great. Red onion is delicious. Ugh. You gotta Ooh. cook down, you gotta cook down the red onion separately. With some red wine, red wine vinegar, a little bit of sugar, salt, pepper, and a little pinch of chili powder. Hmm. Do, the, do the same thing with mushrooms, and they're just going to absorb that red See, wine. I love mushrooms. Mm. No to the red onion. No to olives. Uh, see, I'll do olives every once in a while. I don't. I will do olives with like a charcuterie board or something like that. I'm not an okay. olive guy when it comes to like regular like olives and food. Give me all top and on. I get fuck. I don't want that. I don't want that. They're salty. I yeah I agree. Salt salt is nice every once in a while. Mm-hmm. You, know? you get a nice like uh, like a nice blackberry jam with like some fresh prosciutto on a crostini. Yeah, I'm gonna want a little olive after that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sherry sherry goes really well with charcuterie. Love it. Really? I dr- uh, yeah. Oh yeah. I'll take sherry. your word for it. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Ola Rosso with some uh, some blue cheese and like fig. Oh, it's so good. You know. Um... That winter lair with the scotch oh, yeah. was amazing. Shout out Tyler Chambers, creator of that cocktail. Yo, so I good. never would have been like scotch. Yeah, I'll have that. Never. The way that we make that grenadine is the most, it's the biggest pain in the ass. Yeah. It's literally like, have you ever pulled seeds out of a pomegranate? I've seen videos. <laughs> Real annoying. Real annoying. <laughs> yeah. Pulling seeds out of a pomegranate, toasting sesame seeds, mashing them together with agave nectar and sugar, and then cooking it in uh do you know what a sous vide is? Mm, I feel like I've seen that word, but no. The sous vide the sous vide is like a little machine. You take a big pot of water, you hook this sous vide into it. It is a water circulator that will do it at like a low temperature without like really boiling it. Because mm-hmm. it circulates it and heats it, it's not boiling the water. And it allows you to rapidly imp- and imbue flavors into anything like we use them at work to make this grenadine we take the sesame seeds sugar uh agave nectar toasted sesame seeds and lentils we put it all in a bag vac seal it and then we put it in the water bath for like three hours so that it rapidly infuses everything and then run it through a strainer to get all of our good juice out of there we do it with marinades for our steaks chicken all kinds of stuff like that Mm, that sounds so good yeah so like good. If, I, if, if I marinate a steak, I'll do it the day before, let it sit overnight, usually put it in like um, like some kind of like a sealed container that's like airtight, whereas I could do that in an hour and a half with a sous vide if I had one. Hmm. So. Interesting. Learning all these tips. Fun fact. <laughs> I love to cook. Love like it. That, that was my passion before I got into drinks, and it just was like kind of like a natural translation. Recipes, bases. And then your adds and your ingredients and different things that you can put in, different methods that you can use to cook. And it's awesome. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's like, I don't know. It's, it's, you know, you, you, it's just fundamental in terms of how we start with a base to something. And then from mm-hmm. there, it just kind of takes on a life of its own if you have a little bit of wherewithal and experience doing it. So it's like songwriting. 
I uh, I was trying to find that rela- that that correlation, <laughs> but I, I'm not that. No, it was it was great. That was perfect. Oh, yeah, thanks. yeah. So so how are we doing on time? I don't even know what time it is. I don't know what time it is either. I haven't even looked at a clock. I don't. I haven't looked at a phone. I, don't, I haven't looked at anything. I don't know what time it is. <laughs> I don't even know how long we were recording. It doesn't matter to me. I I don't know. I don't know either. I'm like. Where is where is even the time on my thing? I don't even see it. Hey, you're back. Me neither. I don't know. Sorry you're not hosting the meeting. This is on me. So obviously I should know, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where I'd find any of this stuff. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Fine. All right. I upgraded this to cock- a saving account, so we got plenty of time. This cocktail's great. I you know. This is a good pick. Gets it. listen, I wanted a piece of Pennsylvania history. We got it. Amazing. And it's also good. So Kendall, it, it sounds to me like you've traveled a decent amount too. Would that be mm-hmm. fair to say? Mm-hmm. What are some, where, where are some of the places you've gone <laughs> that have been like really notable and stuck out in your head? Have any of these things influenced you as an artist? Like, um, So I've lived in Nashville for like four years. Love that town. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's cool. Um, it's definitely like it's Southern, but... I don't, you ha- you've been obviously right I have. um it's like a city but it's not i know it's so and, wide, it's so wide open and spread out it's, it's bizarre. yes the and so they have people. like they have like fried chicken and you know and then they have like um the catbird seat which is like a 10 course or something like fine dining experience so they have like you know, the usual Southern fair. And then they have like crazy stuff. And then they have like the dream hotel where I saw the, the Victoria's secret models just had a big party there. Yeah. So they have like, they have, yeah. So they have like stuff that you would think that was there. And then like very, like almost, um, New York style things. Um, so I really, I really liked it there. And like, I think New York is one of my favorite, the city. Yeah. Yeah. And not I, just like Times Square and all that. I mean, like just, you know, Brooklyn and like all of the different like pockets, East Village, West Village. Like yep. it's, it's, it's so vibey. I love the village. I love Soho. I have mm-hmm. fallen in love with Brooklyn in the last like five years. I think Brooklyn is just so cool. So diverse. There's so much, to, so many different things you can do within a 15 minute walk of each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I made the mistake of uh, booking a hotel in Times Square once with an ex-girlfriend. I will never, ever, ever stay anywhere near Times Square ever again. Why? Because I did not like having lights on 24 hours a day outside of my hotel. Uh, that shit don't they have out. like the blinds or whatever? Yeah, they weren't that good. They weren't that good. We were uh. literally overlooking the square. I forget which hotel it was. So I'm like <laughs> 27th floor and there's like a billboard that just dominates the whole eye, the, the whole vista out of the window. And I'm just like, son of a <laughs> I do but it was like 115 bucks I went up to see a Rangers mm-hmm. game and I was like yeah this isn't the worst thing in the world I it also, sounds kind of fun I love New York City I miss going mm-hmm. to New York City. Yeah, I go to yeah, I... go in the back and, and hit up the uh the the knockoff Louis Vuittons and all that stuff on Canal Street mm-hmm. it's just it's it's so vibrant it's mm-hmm. so fun and and there's so much to do have you traveled anywhere since March of last year when we started to get locked down and this shit started to get a little weirder? Um, I'm trying to think. I think the end of July, I had a gig at a country club in Franklin, Tennessee. Okay. How the, that's awesome. I mean, that sounds awesome. I just don't understand how you would go to like all of a sudden, oh yeah, I got a gig down in Franklin, Tennessee <laughs> that I got to get to. Someone... Can, who was a member of that club was like you should play here I can connect you with the the booking person and I was like you know it's COVID I haven't done anything for a while and at that point I was like you know what why not yeah. um so I think it, I think it was the Vanderbilt Legends Club or something like that um and that was the end of July and that was really fun and I've never been to Franklin so I, I lived in Nashville all that time and I never got out to Franklin. So finally got to see Franklin. It's a really cute, like small town and we stayed downtown. Um, I went with my mom and it was really fun. Main and it was, it, was it like a main streetish downtown? Yeah. Pretty much everything's on that yes. one big long block. And 
Yes. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. I know there's, and so I know there's like quaint, southern towns like that. Yes. Yes. It was it was more um the textbook southern, I think, almost than Nashville itself. Um, which was interesting. But that that was I mean, that was fun. Yeah. But other than that, um no, I haven't gone anywhere, which is very sad. Are you a traveler? Oh my I I have been to forty seven states. I have been to three provinces in Canada, the east and west coast of Mexico, and now I have three um European countries on my <laughs> on my traveler's card as well. So a little bit. I I've I have been traveling since I was a little kid. It's my favorite thing to do. I I so, like I like to travel and I like to go to a hole in the wall bar that is not in any freaking guidebook. And I like to just mm. go sit at the bar and offer to buy somebody some drinks. And I'm just going to be like, what's going on? What's the local flavor? <laughs> what's up? Mm, I'm the opposite of that. I did that. Mm -mm. I did that in Amsterdam two years ago. And yeah. you could feel everybody just stop doing everything they're doing. When two random Americans walked into a Dutch neighborhood bar in the city and they're like what the hell everywhere i go when i was in mexico i was in a in a little town called la colombe which was maybe 1500 people i went there for a bullfight mm -hmm. i've never seen a bullfight before and i think i was 20 22 23 years old and i just go into the arena i start buying pork tacos beers i got a cigar and i'm just sitting in the stands screaming and yelling i made friends with a few guys we went out for drinks afterwards it was awesome <laughs> crazy I lo like that's the way that i like to travel so yeah mm -hmm. I, I i made it up to maine and cape cod in august for like a little family getaway mm -hmm. um, it was very secluded very much in the middle of nowhere so we weren't you know trying to go to like like i would normally go to a city but mm -hmm. it was it was really nice to get away and get to travel a little bit so lobster lobster <laughs> lobster <laughs> yeah of course we had lobster up in maine and Cape Cod. It was like how was it? All the oysters, beautiful. It's beautiful. Mm. I, I I I was in Cape Cod a couple of years ago. Um, it's the only place in the country I like to wear my speedo because it makes people really really uncomfortable. Really? Uh huh. Yeah yeah. If you go on my Facebook page, you can find a picture of me in the speedo up at Cape Cod, rocking a matching John Deere hat to the colors of the speedo. Perfect. <laughs> fashion. That is fashion. That is that is Cape Cod <laughs> fashion. People did not know what to do. They just. <laughs> Fucking, I was around with white, it's the only place I'll drink white claws and the only place I'll wear a speedo. I love it up there. Seriously, I don't <laughs> like I, I don't like the beach in Cape Cod. Fucking does it for me every single time. Oh, see, I don't like the beach either. So you nope. like a woods or city? You I, you seem like a city a city goer. Woods are okay. City is ideal. Yeah. 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 Like you put me in front of a big skyscraper. Oh yeah. Yep, favorite, that's it. What city you've ever been to, Kendall? New York. Where? What city do you want to go to that you haven't been to? Hmm. 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 Atlanta. You've never been to Hotlanta. Mm. Mm. It's all right. Nope. Atlanta is okay. the prettiest city, but there's so much to do. It's so much fun. Second is maybe Miami. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't do Miami. That's too. That's too much for me. I'm not a club guy. And mm -hmm. like that's mostly Miami. Like I would love to go down and eat through like the Cuban neighborhoods and stuff, but my next city is definitely New Orleans. Oh, see, I've been there. Never been in New Orleans. It's great. It sucks. I want to. You'd like it so bad. Actually, I think the next city I'm going to be visiting is is Louisville and Lexington. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go down okay. the Bourbon Trail through Kentucky. Is like nice. That's my bachelor party. So. Okay. Okay. Really that's a good stuff. choice. Oh hell yeah! Yeah, I like that for you. So, you know, yeah. yeah, New Orleans is great, though. I, 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 a lot of unique drinks there. Oh, I can't wait because they use the, the, uh, absinthe, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. There is, and a, the... there, is, there is a classic cocktail that was made in New Orleans pre revolutionary war called the Sazerac. That is, yes, made, that was made I was famous just by the say carousel that. bar. Mm -hmm. you know, we had some Sazeracs. I want to drink some Sazeracs in New Orleans. Yeah, they were big there. I also want to go listen to and blues so this. jazz because I absolutely love the blues. This is, jazz. I got this at Sueño in Philly. At Sueño. I know what yeah. that is, but I don't remember where it is. It's like a, a Mexican food, but it's like Day of the Dead themed. Es mucho sueño. Yes. And sueño means dream, I believe. I don't know, Spanish. actually. That's, you know. 
That is a good glass, though. There's a there's a I, place in Easton. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's still open. It's called Black and Blue. That was very much a DSW. just went there literally oh, yeah. two days two okay, days ago. Cool. So they there. are open. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the food was phenomenal and it was decorated beautifully. Do they still do like, like tapa style food or what? I got a burger that had coleslaw, bacon, mozzarella cheese on it, and it was amazing. So you're like super adventurous with the food. Like you don't, you, you, you DGAF when it comes to. Oh, like whatever the weirdest item is on the menu. That's what I get. You know, that's I'm like, what chefs recommend. What getting the weirdest item. They, 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 if there's something weird on the menu, like serious chefs are like, no, no, no. I want you to get that because that's the one, <laughs> like I work really hard. Well, cause you can't get it anywhere else. So you might as well try it. I agree. You know, get burgers, burgers seem to come up a lot. Mm-hmm. What for me or just yeah, in yeah, general? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because you talked yeah, about the burger at Notch, you talked about yeah. the burger now at Black and Blue, and I believe there was yeah. somewhere else that you talked about a burger here today. House and Barn. That's right. Ostrich. <laughs> yes. Nice. The elk is also good. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love elk. Mm -hmm. I would eat elk all the time if I could. That's great. Really good. I'm yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Think I like elk sure. than deer. Hmm. I think I don't know if I've had their vet. They have venison there too. What at House and Barn? Yeah. Jeez. Where have you been? Where have you been? I don't get out much in the last year. Okay, I'm really sorry. I haven't been getting House out. House and much. Barn, you gotta go. Shout out and Greg get... Fiedler. Shout out Greg Fiedler at House and Barn. That's my boy, <laughs> Jibby. He's the so executive good. chef at House and Barn. He and I used really? to be together at Roar Social House. Once okay, time, long time. Ago. Yeah, it's it's really good. I play there sometimes. So awesome. Yeah, I have the pleasure of playing and eating there. Yeah, man. And all these places take care of you in terms of like, now, do you have to pay for food most of the time or do they hook you up? That's a personal question. No, no, that's a business question. That's not a personal no. question. I'm not asking how much you make. I don't want to know that. Well, I'm we're happy, talking about I'm music. happy that you're out here hustling. You know, I love seeing people. Should I play something? Hell yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. You going to play your new single that you don't want to tell me about? I'll play my my latest single. What's it called? Um, it's called Stranger Things. Yeah, I think I might have mm -hmm. heard that song before, believe it or not. But really, um, on that note, where would people find your music? What's the best place for people to find your music? Follow you? Let's let's plug this. Let's plug the Kendall Conrad experience and uh, see if we um, can follow us by like a dozen after the after the airing of the show. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, gigs are all posted on my Facebook. Uh -huh. which is the URL is Kendall Conrad music one L um, Instagram is Kendall Conrad, YouTube, Kendall, same thing. It's all just my name. So we're looking for your name. K E N D A L C O N R A D Kendall Conrad. You got it. Awesome. So go ahead Kendall, whenever you're ready. <laughs>
pieces We both felt it from that first kiss We shouldn't do that, shouldn't do that, shouldn't do that Awesome. Thank you. So what what where where was the inspiration from that one from? That's a great tune. That's Thank not you. like that doesn't sound like super country to me. Um it's not. So it's not like, you know, friends in low places. Um I I really think that I Poor Garth, um, he's having a week, isn't he? <laughs> poor Garth. Oh shit, um, what just happened? All my lights went off. Hang on. I don't know what's going on here. Cool. There we are. Hey, we're back. <laughs> Oh, power outage never hurt um, nobody. Um, 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 no, I mean, it's, I, I, I'm pop country and I've never been, you know, just Dwayne country. Yoakum, twang country. Yeah. I've never been. And I mean, I'm not Southern, so I didn't grow up in that or in that lifestyle or, or anything like that. And so, you know, I grew up listening to Whitney and Mariah and Janet and, Nice. that's yeah and and then i found country because of taylor swift and so and then i found reba and i found like all of these great country artists and i really built country on top of that foundation of of pop um so no it's not solid straight you know george Strait country sure. um but it's like my kind of country which i like awesome so yeah mm -hmm. okay if, if you keep booking gigs and growing and, and I mean, you've opened for some pretty, pretty notable people from what I mm -hmm. understand. So can you, can you just, you know, plug yourself a little bit and tell everybody about how awesome you are in terms of <laughs> what you've done so far. And then, um, yeah. So like I've, I've opened shows for, um, I don't know, Blake Shelton, Kane Brown was, was great. Um, Old Dominion, like they were Ooh, amazing. I listen to them. I like them. Yeah, they're great. They're great guys too. Um, Michael Ray, uh, Devin Dawson, he did God's Country, Blake Shelton, um, tons of people sang with Keith Urban, tons of stuff. So, um, and, and when you get to open shows for those people, you get to see their shows too, which is great. And you get to see like, you know, their crew and how they build their set and like what they, yeah. what instruments and like, you get to see all that. Um, so it's really, it's very cool. I once, uh, I once got forcibly removed backstage at a Kenny Chesney concert. That's not a good story to tell. I had, I had a backstage pass, but because I wasn't a pretty woman, I wasn't allowed back there. I literally yeah. had about, I was at the, the, the Lincoln financial field down in Philadelphia and um, I was down there with my parents and their friends and one of their friends, he's from Canada originally. He knows the Zach Brown band personally, got backstage passes of, from them. Uh, they all went backstage when Zach Brown was on. I was just like kind of walking around doing my thing. And uh, when Kenny Chesney came on, I was like, hey, can I have one of your backstage passes? And they gave it to me and I walked backstage and I was doing like the, hey, I'm good. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, you're good. Come on through, man. And uh, as soon as I get back there, I literally walk up to the bar and I'm like, hey, man, how much for a beer? He goes, dumbass you're backstage they're free and i said okay cool take you know whatever no like i'm just standing there like taking this in there's like a hundred something thousand people there and i'm like holy shit and um i literally get my badge ripped off of my neck and i get physically picked up by these two guys from underneath my arms and i get carried out and handed to the cops and they're like this guy doesn't belong back here should have played it cool Oh, I did play it cool. I just like looked at the cops. I was like, guys, I'm not drunk. Like cops were carrying me. Like I was too okay. drunk to function. Okay. And I was like, okay. I'm not even drunk. Like I'm, I'm cool. I can walk. Are you guys okay if I walk? And they're like, yeah, we're okay if you walk. So I walked and I had to sit underneath for like a half hour, 45 minutes while the cops were like, this guy's fine. Why did they kick you out? And I said, I don't know. Hmm. Man. That was it. interesting. That was my experience at a country show. It was great. I would do it again. Mm -hmm. 10 out of 10. 
Yeah. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Would do again. Why were you there? I, I, I was given a ticket. I okay. live in Philadelphia. It was a it was a quick subway ride for me. So for that, okay. I'm like, sure. All right. Um, okay. But what I'm does... told I have never seen him live, but I'm told that he's great. Mm. That's what it sounded like from underneath the stadium in the tunnels. It sounded awesome. Okay. Okay. Um, cool. So what does 2021 hold for you? Um, you know, I would like to play some different states and cities and things like that. I don't know when or if that's going to happen. Maybe this summer, maybe this fall. I don't know. Um, putting out a new single in February. Awesome. Hopefully. Awesome. Um, I don't want to give anything away. Not yet. <laughs> but it's coming out in February. <laughs> Super excited. You will absolutely, you will absolutely get nothing but love from us um, when that comes out. So I love, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I can say though, that this is pretty, probably my my most pop leaning track where you're going to be like is this country but it's got a banjo in it sweet but it's very um edm ish it's very vibey and synthy and pulsy and bassy and then That's there's awesome. like a, a banjo in some of it and you're like what is this so i i like to yeah i like to be um uh contradictory if that makes any sense. I like to put things together that don't really fit. Um, exactly what you're talking about with that. Yep. Yeah, 100%. maybe with drinks. Yeah, you'd That's, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's fun to do that because then you 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 have the final product and you're like, no, it actually supposed this- supposed to work, but it does. But it does, it does work and it's great. It's actually great um, and it's different. So that's that's all I, I want to say about the new awesome. the new song. Do you have any gigs um, coming up soon that people could come see you? Um, yeah, I should be playing every Friday, Saturday. Again, check my Facebook page. I'm not sure where I'm playing this weekend, but yeah, post everything on my page. Awesome. Well, listen, Kendall, this has been a wonderful adventure getting to know you and spending some time and listening mm -hmm. to music, talking food. Um, it's been an absolute blast. So let's do yes. this again soon. Yes, right. absolutely. We will keep an eye out. Kendall Conrad, that's Kendall, K-E-N-D-A-L, C-O-N-R-A-D, Kendall Conrad on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Kendall's Bites on Instagram. Make sure you follow there if you love food around the Lehigh Valley. And Kendall, cheers to your health, yeah. to your future, to 20, 2021 being a, a little more prosperous and adventurous for all of us. Back at you. Yes. Thanks so Cheers. much for your time. All right. Thank, bye thanks bye for everybody. having me.